Hello all, looking at the uh, new technical paints uh, just released by Games Workshop. Um, some of you may have seen these, there's some great tutorials online showing you how to use them. So there's uh, one called Blood for the Blood God and that's supposed to be for uh, blood spatters and stuff like that. And it's a bit of a thicker paint. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up each one of these, show you what's inside, uh, give you sort of an impartial or independent anyways review. may not be impartial depending on how you feel about them. Um, uh, and uh, I'll try them out to see if they work as they are advertised and then you can decide whether or not you want to pick them up or not. Uh, in Canada they're five dollars each which is the same price as any of the other GW paints so uh, a little bit less than the US and a uh, different price obviously elsewhere in the world. So yeah, uh, Blood for the Blood God is a sort of supposed to be a blood type of a paint putting it on weapons and things like that. We have uh, Typhus Corrosion, so this is going to be like a, a rust that's apparently got like a little bit of a grit in it. Um, we've got this Agrelin Earth, um, another uh, sort of dust and weathering type of a one thing. We've got this uh, Oxide here, so this is going to be for your uh, patina finish on your brasses and stuff like that. Um, Nurgle Rot, so another uh, weathering type thing, we'll check that out and a uh, rust, sort of a dry brush. This is actually a, dress, uh, a dry paint. Um, it's going to be dry brushed on. So I think some of the idea here is uh, this stuff here is kind of like a wash and it goes on your bronzes. Um, you, you can hear it, it's quite thin there. So let's open up that one first. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like a wash. It's very, very, very thin. Um, you can do almost the same thing, I imagine, with this. Uh, using your Temple Guard Blue, which obviously is a bit of a different color. Um, this looks like it's closer to the uh, to the Skink Blue, although it's a bit more of a green. Um, and uh, so you could probably mix this up yourself. Um, actually, it's very close to the Hellion Green, um, maybe a bit darker. So yeah, that's a uh, great uh, thing to use. You could probably make your own depending on what color you want to mix up. So uh, that's the uh, oxide. So Nurgle Rot. Let's take a look at this one. So this looks like a slightly thicker one. Um, looks like it has a bit of a, a grit in it. Very very fine grit. Yeah so that's slightly thicker than your normal paint. Um, doesn't seem, doesn't appear to have much of a texture but it's hard to say, so we'll try that out. Um, the rust, so this is, says right on it, dry. Let's take a look. And uh, yeah, similar to the other dries, although it looks a little bit wetter. That could just be because it's new. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more liquid than most of the dries. Most of the dries I have are quite solid. Okay, the uh, the earth one. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, it doesn't look like it has much texture, but I think that's like a micro texture in there. And uh, it's a little bit thicker. Seems maybe slightly same consistency as the rest of the paints. Uh, we'll give that a shot. The uh, Typhus Corrosion. So this one here sounds thin. And uh, yeah, so it's it's a similar consistency to the, uh, the Oxide, which is a really wet sort of a... a Thing. And yeah, you can see the you can see the micro grit in there. So the idea is that you paint that on as like a rust, and then you would dry brush it with this here to get your rust sort of a look. And blood for the blood god. So this one here is for your uh, your weapons splatters. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a thick one. Um, you can see it there. It's kind of a thicker paint, very deep red. Um, yeah, so let's take a break here, and uh, when I come back, I'll try out each one of these. Okay, for the first one I'm going to try out, I'm going to try out this oxide stuff. And so, uh, like I uh, showed you, it's it's very thin, so it's just going to get a bit on the brush. It's very much like a wash, um, and I'm just going to try painting it on here, just to get an idea of what it looks like and uh, how it works. So. Um, as you can see, it goes on quite thin. In the video that they, they demonstrate, they show you kind of wiping it off so it just uh, stays in the cracks. Uh, another way to do that is if you do this sort of as your wash um, in between stages, then you do your highlights after, you can get things nice and bright. So uh, this is basically just like a glaze uh, that you can make yourself by mixing in some of the Lantham Medium 
um, or or whatever. So uh, handy to have. I you know depends on what your budget is for your for your paints, but uh, overall you know nothing nothing magic about this. There's no special mixture in here that I can tell. So you can mix this up yourself using uh, whatever color to get sort of uh, this this type of a shade. Um, so I really like the the uh, patina look on my bronzes, and I I've been doing it on my own using uh, in the old paints it was Dark Angels Green, and uh, I forget what I think it was uh, Snot Green or something like that or Warped Warped uh, Storm Glow. Uh, and the new ones I just use one of the Temple Guard Blue or the Skink Green or something like that. Uh, but this one here is a, a nice uh, pre mixed one, so depending on what you want to do, that uh, may or may not be useful for you. Okay, so I'm going to move on to another one. Alright, so let's look at Typhus Corrosion. I'm going to uh, try this out on one of my other tutorials later on, um, but just going to show you a little bit of a demo or try it out with a little bit. So it's like a wash, except there's a, a micro grid in there. And uh, in the demonstration that GW does, they, they show it on a tank. I'm just going to try it on here. So it, it kind of looks a lot like, um, looks very similar color to your uh, Strickland Mud. Uh, I would say it's actually the same color, uh, but obviously it's uh, it's more of a wash than a dry, or sorry, than a texture. But it does have a little bit of texture in it, sort of a micro texture. So um, yeah, it kind of goes on like a glaze that you could probably mix yourself, but this micro texture is going to make it quite neat. Um, obviously you're going to have to make sure that you, you shake it a lot. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a, a cool one. I'm going to try that out on my vehicles. I've got some ultramarine stuff here um, that I'll, I'll give it a shot on. So let's see, get a bit on my brush. And uh, they suggest you just paint it in the, these crevices here. And uh, kind of sloppy. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, it goes on. It's semi-transparent except for when it pools in the, in the cracks there and uh, you'll paint it around the edges and have it dripping down and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'll see. I think that, that works well. That's a, kind of a neat one if you're, if you're working on some vehicles and stuff like that. They also suggest doing it for um, some of your corroded weapons. It gives a bit of a rusty texture. So uh, yeah, I think that one there's, that's probably a win. Um, I don't think that's something you can mix up yourself quite the same way with a texture, so uh, that's probably a keeper. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so uh, here we have the Agrelian Earth, or whatever it's pronounced. So this one's meant to be um, sort of a crackle finish. And so you look at it, it looks kind of like a normal paint and uh, meant for bases or that sort of thing. So let's give it a shot on an ultra, uh, just a space marine base here. Probably not gonna have time to, uh, to dry. Um, so I'll have to come back to this, but uh, they're saying that you paint it on kind of thick. Um, the, the, the thickness of how much you paint it on will determine how much of a crackle you get. So uh, Vallejo and uh, lots of craft stores uh, sell crackle finish sort of paints that give you the same sort of a look. So um, you know whether or not you want to get the GW one, that's up to you. Obviously it only comes in one color. The, uh, if you go to say Michael's Craft Store, you can get giant bottles of this for probably a similar price. So. Um, that might be something to consider if you're uh, thinking about doing your bases like this. So I'll make sure that we have a nice thick coat. So obviously it goes on nice. Uh, it's a decent color. The, uh, the color of that is very similar, I'm going to say, to um, to Steel Lead and Drab. Maybe a little bit more of a flat brown, but a very similar color to that. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll come back to that. I'm going to say that this one here is probably, um, unless you really like this specific look, probably not something that I would pick up otherwise. But uh, for the review, obviously I did pick it up, but I don't think that's going to see much use. Um, just I like my bases to be textured. Um, I find that a lot of bases, there's that little nib in the middle that you have to paint over anyways, maybe with some liquid green stuff. And so this doesn't really save me a whole lot. I've got that uh, slot of base in the middle there. Um, so we'll see if it covers that up at all, but uh, yeah, we'll let that guy dry and we'll come back, but I'm thinking I would pass on that. So let's see what's next. Okay, so this is the Nurgle's Rot. So the idea with this one again is it's a, it's a slightly thinner, well not really, it's a, it's a bit of a thinner paint. Um, it goes on semi-translucent and uh, supposed to 
dry really glossy. So uh, the idea being it's kind of a pus sort of a thing that you paint on things. I'm not sure how much I like the, the gloss look on my models, um, sort of mixed in with other things. Let's see what I'm going to put it on here. Um, so uh, if you're, I guess if you're collecting a Nurgle army, this might be something you definitely want. Uh, but otherwise, I don't see much use for it. Um, let's see, what am I going to paint it on? Okay, I've got Alder model here. So let's give it a quick, quick go. So uh, the idea is that you paint it in some of the, the crevices and it's going to give this sort of a putrid uh, look. So it's uh, semi-translucent, at least that's what they say. So the deeper areas will have a, a nice even color and the other areas will be a bit translucent. Um, yeah, I mean, whether or not this is useful for you, it really depends on if you like that look. If you like the glossy look, you can obviously make up your own. Um, I would say that if you used... That's not quite the same. Um, there's probably some other colors here in the uh, you know, Nurgling green isn't quite as bright as that. But uh, if you mix that in with some of the the gloss uh, color and um, you know watered it down with a little lanthanum medium, I'm sure you get the exact same thing. There's no texture in this, so. Uh, yeah, whether or not you want to get that, it's up to you, but um, I'm going to say I would pass normally on that. Okay, so two more left. Let's get to those. All right, so here's uh, the Rise of Rust. Um, so this is supposed to be a dry paint. It's, uh, it's obviously a lot wetter than the dry paints I'm used to seeing, um, which isn't a problem. It's just a, just a difference. Um, one of the things I, I'd like to mention is that I use uh, Reaper Rust Brown. I've used that for a long time. It's a very flat uh, rust color. I really like it. This one here is obviously very bright um, and it's meant to be going on as a dry brush, not as a normal paint. So let's give this a shot, see if it works the way they say. So you dry brush that on something. I mean, this is not that different than, uh, than dry brushing on, say, um, your uh, troll, troll slayer orange, which is maybe a little darker, uh, very similar to a fire dragon uh, bright. So something like that. I guess it depends on on the dry brushing that you like to do. Um, but uh, you know, if you put it on too thick, it's going to look like like junk. Um, and uh, I think they they suggest putting the typhus corrosion on things. So what you would do for say uh, you know a rusty axe is you would start out with your, your lead belcher, um, you put your typhus corrosion on kind of as a wash and texture, and you dry brush this on, and uh, then you go on with a rune fang steel edge highlight. So the difference between your regular flow, um, normally I would do sort of an Agrax Earthshade and Newland Oil wash, so this might replace that. Um, and then I would uh, do edges, or I do a bit of rust um, using the Reaper one. So I think this could be useful depending on uh, how you how you like your rust to look. Um, obviously, there's no no magic about uh, dry brushing. You can do it with any paint. You don't necessarily need to buy a special one. But uh, you know, if uh, if you like that rusty look, say you have orcs or if you have ogres or skaven, um, that can be handy for your army. Um, I find a lot of these. It's you know, it's a matter of. Uh, cleaning up the workflow, so making things easier. It's not necessarily that you have to do it one way, um, but uh, that's the idea is that you have a consistent way across your army to get the same look. So I would probably get this um, if, I, you know, if I wasn't doing these videos and, and trying to pay for things with, with that sort of advertising. Um, if it's just on my own, I would probably get that. So I like, I like the rust look, I like a consistent thing, and uh, the idea of having the corrosion giving a bit of a texture those, I think, for me, would be the winners. Uh, last one we're going to look at is Blood for the Blood God. So I'm just going to take a break here and we'll come back. Okay, so Blood for the Blood God is another technical paint. Um, that's going to be kind of, a, I think, a glossy finish, a thicker red than your, your usual paints. Um, very, very deep pigment on that, which I, I like. Um, I've never had any... Uh, great success putting on uh, blood splatters on things, so I typically just avoid it. It um, doesn't seem to work out for me, so uh, all my ogres have just plain 
uh, weapons with a bit of rust on them, uh, but uh, no blood splatter. So let's see what this looks like. Um, I'm still waiting for this stuff here to dry at uh, the Agrellian Earth uh, crackle. I might not have put it on thick enough. But let's see what this uh, blood stuff looks like if I put a bit on the model. So yeah, so it goes on quite uh, almost transparent there. Um, and I think the idea is that you have to put it on, you know, over a brighter color. Black might not be the greatest idea. And uh, they also suggest kind of spraying it on. Um, I'm going to say this is going to be a gloss finish, which you can obviously make yourself uh, by mixing in some gloss medium or painting over it with a gloss finish. So that may or may not be useful to you. In terms of the actual color, uh, it's a nice deep red. It's a deeper red than your corn red. Um, but you could probably get a similar red if you did uh, corn or the Mephiston red and did the Corborg Crimson along with it. I'm going to try to find that in the paints. Where is that? So, Corborg Crimson is a bit uh, darker again. So, uh, yeah, again, the, 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 the main goal here is having something that's... Uh, consistent across your army so if you're doing lots of blood splatters it would make sense to do this and you can get it all done at once um, if you're just doing it once or twice it might not be worth spending the, the five dollars or whatever it is in your own currency so this is uh, showing up here the thicker areas are a bit deeper red um, I, I think I'm probably gonna like that look uh, in my ogre kingdoms I've been waiting for something along this lines to do all their hands and weapons and um, might end up doing that so this is kind of a maybe one for me. I think the name is pretty cool. Uh, kind of fun that they took that. Uh, Blood for the Blood God and uh, yeah, obviously neat. So uh, my overall conclusion, uh, obviously your budget will determine what these uh, are for you. Uh, these technical paints uh, in general, you know, kind of like the, the shades and the washes previously are the idea is to, to speed up your workflow, make make life easier, and give you sort of cheats to uh, to get really cool effects um, with less stages and less uh, less hassle. So uh, it, if that doesn't matter to you, then there's no reason to buy these. Um, you have some uh, neat uh, textures in this one here, so I think that one's definitely a winner. Um, the the oxide, I think having something pre-mixed, obviously you can do that yourself. But uh, for me, that would be a winner just because I really like that look. And the rust is a winner. Um, and also the blood for the blood god. The crackle paint, I'm going to say not so much. You can get uh, crackle mixes so you can get your own colors um, for way cheaper and way more. So if that's a look you really like, uh, you could do this. Or you could get another manufacturer. Nurgle Rot, I really don't have much use for that in my armies. So I'm um, not sure if I'll ever really use that. So yeah, that's my, my thoughts on these. Uh, feel free to leave comments if you have your own thoughts, any further questions on these. Um, you know, I, I really like the technical paints, and uh, if, if you don't, well, then you might disagree with some of my, my evaluations. Anyways, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this, found this helpful, and uh, check out my other videos on my channel, my blog, and uh, see you next time.